Hey everyone, Joe here from Action X. Welcome to What's on the Tube, where it's Action X, a show where we talk about all things in the world of television, which normally include episode by episode reviews of currently airing shows, season by season reviews for long established shows or shows that are wrapped up, or doing these quick impressions for the second time as once again my microphone spazzed out on me. Um, so the original video footage of Grey's Anatomy um, was lost forever. Well, the, the video was there, the audio was gone, so I'm like, Jesus Christ, if it's not the video, it's always the audio, it's like, I can never win lately, like, sometimes I'm lucky, and then sometimes I'm not, like, it seems like once a week I seem to lose something, and I end up having to do, like, an, an ADR or something like that, but anyway, um, so, today we're gonna be talking about quick, um, Grace Anatomy, quick impressions, 20 minutes in and out, because, if you're unaware, I have binged the entirety of Grace Anatomy throughout the summer of 2021, uh, from the end of May all the way to the middle of August, I binged the entire 17 season run of the show and now expectantly waiting for season 18 to arrive at the end of this month. Grey's Anatomy has been somewhat of a experience for me in terms of just hearing about it to me pushing it off for the longest time and then finally... In May, I pulled the trigger, by the way, if you hear any barking in the background, my neighbor's dog is um, barking for some reason. Um, I don't know why. I don't know where. I can't control it. So we're going to leave it as there. But anyway, for me, Grey's Anatomy started in the age old year of 2016, which if you have heard of me a lot of times already on What's in the Two, 2016 was kind of like this focal year for me. I'm really getting into TV. It, it was 2013 when I got into more currently scripted series of, of television, not the old ages of Nickelodeon, Disney Channel, etc. So when I eventually got to 2016, I binged a ton of shows. A lot of the shows that I'm currently watching right now or have already wrapped up have been during 2016. That was like just the m biggest year where it was just a lot of shows were watched Grey's Anatomy was not one of them, but I heard about it a lot through friends, through the grapevine, and just hearing about it so many times. And I think by that point, it was going into its, what, 12th, 13th season around there. So I've heard about it for dev, but I just, I never want to go into a medical drama for the reason of, even later on, is it's, for me, in my mind, it's, like, it's the same thing. It's literally... Very corny drama moments filled in with medical knowledge, and then they split it up in, with an attractive cast, and there you go, there's your show. And it seems like every network at the time had their own version of a medical drama. Grey's was on ABC. I know The Resident, The Good Dr the good Doctor. Um, there's just, like, a ton of them, and it just blends so in together. It's like, I'm not surprised. Like, if you get cast in a medical drama, it's either going to be very not special or just unique somehow, and they... The more they do, the more they have to, like, figure out some sort of new angle to take it in. But it's almost the same thing. So that's why, for me, I never wanted to get into Grace, even though technically it's, like, the pinnacle of, like, medical dramas out there. So I kept pushing it off for using years and years. And last year, uh, a new another friend of mine, she pushed me to eventually watching it. And uh, after Supernatural wrapped up with its 15-year run, which was, by that point, the biggest binge I've ever done of a show, was 12 seasons... Through and throughout, catching it all the time for season 13. I don't want to say. I think I'm binge Supernatural 2017, I believe, because no, 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 I'm thinking about it. I don't think I, I started it in 2016 properly. So I did I did that. And then after Supernatural, I was like, I was ready for a new journey, a new longish journey that's going to take me up some time. And I decided, you know what? Grey's was it. I finally started it on Netflix. Um, I have some interesting choices for overall, um, basic bottom through line. I really did enjoy it. I think it was a really consistently well done show from season one's episode one to season 17's episode. I forgot what episode they ended on 18. I want to say I'm just shocked. Cause like when, when it comes to shows like these, you inevitably get into like cast changes. Like, you know, either old guys come out, new guys come in. You have new writers, new showrunners, new di story directions, uh, uh, and it's it's just so boggling to see that um, that Grey's still somehow managed to keep the same core. Like Grey's, 
looks different from when you started, obviously, from season one to season 17. It's definitely a big roller coaster of a change. But the thing that stood out on top of it was the fact that the core still felt the same. This still feels like, feels like a Grey's episode um, through and through. Like, the identity and the core is still there. Like, I never once thought this was a different show. This was still the same show um, from beginning to end. Uh, and I, it got better over time sometimes because, again, if you're unaware, this is a quick impression, meaning that I will not spoil anything beyond episode one. So if even if you're squeamish about episode one, too bad. Um, I'm spoiling that. Beyond that, everything else is still um, off limits. I won't be touching anything else, so don't worry. I won't be spoiling anything. Honestly, for me, the get-go, like, uh, when it comes to me, once, once I start a show 90% of the time, I will finish it through and through. No matter how bad it gets, no matter how boring it gets, I still finish it. Grey's was one of those things where episode one started, I was very underwhelmed by it. I had little no, to no expectations going into it, and even those were like, okay, this is like 2004, 2005 style writing, so... I shouldn't be too surprised about certain, you know, character choices, character directions, you know, certain words being said. Because this was a different time period. Because I'm so used to, like, the current years. Even shows that I'm still watching for the first time. I still kind of, like, new and modern. So it's like, they, they know, they keep in check of what they can say and what they can't say or what doesn't work anymore in this day and age. 2004, 2005 feels like a very different time zone it, it does it, it doesn't feel that long ago in 2004 i was binging over the best year movies i think that's when the, sh the show started on that time period but then you get to that point where things start to change and the show did not definitely feel that in the beginning it, it didn't i could I, I it stood out like a sore thumb it really did um between everything but again Character wise, everyone was enjoyable to say the least. We have our the, the original five interns, um, Meredith, George, Christina, Izzy, and Alex. And through and through, it's surprising that all of them have their own unique personalities and they all work. But truth be told, eventually, I got, I got, I got a little bit like, okay, this is kind of predictable, or this is kind of like stupid. Because again, I'm, I'm used to the day and age, even with recent shows being more wiser to like okay here's proper you know communication here's proper human actions and some of the times it just it doesn't work but what i will say with this is that um it gets better overall it it definitely has those points where you sit back and watch and you realize this is a human story because i didn't again I had little to no expectations. I didn't. I went into the show blinding hoping that it would be decent at the end. And honestly, one of the things that again keeping to the core of it, it's still a human story. It, it, you see these characters grow and change and mature and develop that characters that you see in season 1 like that are still around later on is just wow and then they flash back to those older months i can't even remember that anymore because that's how long we've been along for this journey so for me in my view in my in my viewing guys like especially like i think the last season um season 17 which dealt with COVID 19 and, and what, what was ironic about that that was the only scripted show i've watched in the last year that was still airing a season during that time period that actually dealt with COVID. It actually did. Because a lot of the other shows I watched did not touch it. It's like, oh, we're fine. There's no such thing as COVID in our world. You know, don't worry about it. And it, it made sense because you, you kind of want to, when you watch a show or you watch a movie, you want to go into this realm of imagination, this realm of fantasy. Because every show is a fantasy like if, or fiction. You don't want to think about your world. You want to think about this world. Grace could have easily just continued their storyline. They could have continued going because, again, season 16 was cut short because of the, uh, the start of the pandemic of all the shutdowns. But season 17 opted to go, no, we're going to tackle it on. We're going to... Grace definitely last season deserves a huge, huge commemoration because even though Grace is still, yes, a medical drama, 
it is not an accurate representation of what's really going on in hospitals. Because A, I have heard some stories and B, I don't work in a hospital, so I wouldn't know. But it definitely is the closest representation for us as like normal people to understand like what are they going through and you know all the entirety of like their emotions and you know just the conditions and and everything else and they made it work with the story they they definitely made it work and i'm actually was pleasantly surprised by it and what i ended up taking away from that um that season is that this show definitely knows what the heck it's doing 17 seasons in where it's a part of life you, you see these characters grow and mature and then eventually you see a new generation. Because, like, yeah, you get new characters thrown in there uh, time and time again and most of the time they stick and they, they're they're lovable and enjoyable. Sometimes they, they don't really do so well and they get written off at some point. I was pleasantly surprised because, like, again, another criticism I would have had was, like, oh, these new characters aren't the same as the old ones and they still aren't. I'm not saying they're amazing like the originals, but they're really really good in their own right and then there was like this one character like i won't specifically i don't even remember what season he, he, de- he debuted in but i met him i saw him and i was like i'm gonna hate this guy because this guy looks like a douchebag and then later on like i actually like this guy and that's awesome that they do this sort of thing like they could still keep adding new characters to this world in an organic way because again the the organic way is they work in a hospital. This is a teaching hospital. They constantly um, bring in new interns to start their internship years and begin their time in the, in the hospital. And we got to see them going through all the the be, the beginning stages of life while we see the older cast kind of just like figuring it out. Like, you know, it, it somehow works. Can it go on forever? Probably not. But I was very happy that they did not bore me at a certain point even my friend said she said i think season 16 or 17 is when she thought the show kind of like derailed a little bit i would say kind of got it a little bit of monopolist because again when you have so many characters because at the end of the day, even though the show's called Grey's anatomy it's still an ensemble show you get tons of people on and a huge cast every season that it is hard to like constantly write new material keep it going keep it entertaining and fresh as well keep give these characters the next step of their development to work in. It is difficult. I will say that. And I wouldn't be lying if I would say that, yeah, they sometimes repeat storylines for the newer characters from an older character that maybe isn't even on the show anymore. It happens because, um, well, the, I guess the reason is that in life, you're bound to go for certain lessons like another person has. It just depends on how you deal with it and how it affects. That would make makes it, you know still special for that character because like this is how they handled it but the other character they did it a different way which makes sense because again this is a show that is very human you see these characters go through their have their own moral compasses and each of them have their own different decision making processes and their own different type of ideals to understand what's right and what's wrong and I think I just I just thought of this. I didn't even think about this in the, in my first recording. Is that the show's name is Grey's Anatomy? Grey is often just like a very neutral thing, where for again me watching a ton of shows, like there's usually like there's a good side, there's a bad guy, there's a good guy and a, and a bad guy. There's the main protagonist and the big bad. And this show definitely doesn't have villains. It doesn't have a bad person to go up against every season, but. They are all people of gray. They even married of herself. Like she's our main protector. Like she's not the a perfect goody good two shoes. She's had a very difficult childhood, a very difficult upbringing, and even when she goes on the journey of the show, like she still makes plenty of mistakes. Even some decisions, like this is not a good decision or this is not a bad decision. But at the end of the day, she did those decisions because she thought those were the right things to do in her mindset. <laughs> But someone else is going to think, no, this isn't right. You're you're making a mistake. That's what makes this, this show stand out from a lot of other shows because this it, it allows them to not paint these guys like, oh, they're the good guys. Like, no, like there are a lot of characters on these show, on the show where like, I do not like this guy because like, you are making the wrong stupid choice. But at the same time for them, it's like or for some other viewers, like, no, this is something I would do. Because every human being is different. Everyone is different. And they're not going to react or, you know, feel the same way as the other person. And that's what makes these characters stand out. 
you know, each and every one of them, like they all have their different identities, their own different personas, their own different um, moral compasses that makes them interesting to watch. That makes me want to tune into the next episode to see what are they going to do next or how does this, you know, line up and everything lines up from T to T. You know, when you go from this, when you go throughout this journey, you see everything connect and everything makes sense. And I applaud them for doing it because it's not easy to keep a show going for 17 season. Will I see it going past 18? Who knows? I think 18 is the end. I personally think it will be, but it could go for 20. could go for 25. Uh, maybe even 30. Who knows? But I, I think if I have to say anything baseline, it you know, in terms of like just a, a point of, you know, ending wise, Grey's is a show that you will never get bored by. Every character has... A story to tell and even though this is Meredith Grey's story of and I'm sorry to be so my hero academia but this is, this is a story how my my uh, Meredith Grey becomes one of the best surgeons in the world to, of the modern times this is also the story of just the the hospital Grace alone and what's going on the ins and outs and you know how does all these characters deal with the the next set of problems that arises you know and you know I'll get I'll say this like they definitely have some like extreme very rare to happen moments, but you know, it creates new conflict and new storylines and through and through. And also I forgot to mention, um, one of the the best characters of the show, which ironically me going into that, I always thought I was going to hate this guy. I really like Alex. Alex is probably my favorite character. Um, I can't, again, I can't say anything more about him because episode one beyond. So spoilers, but I think after everyone, he, besides Gray, he has developed the best out of all of them. Like, he became a very, he he was an, a very immature man to a very mature, respected man that still made some questionable choices. But at the end of the day, because of his moral compass, he did what he thought was right. And also, yes, I would be remiss to not say Patrick Dempsey as... Derek Shepard is McDreamy, and yes, he is very, very attractive. I will say that much. I am a man, and I'm willing to admit it because I can. So um, I completely understand why people were fangirling over her, because to be honest with Patrick Dempsey, I've only seen him in one piece of work before this show, which was Transformers Dark of the Moon, where he played a dickbag, rich car, like, company CEO or something. I, I forgot about Transformers Dark in the Moon. I prefer to not remember it again. But I could fill up the idea of Patrick Dempsey with Derek Shepard and not evil rich douchebag from Transformers 3. So that works out even better, in my opinion. But, but yeah, but also I, I would be remiss to say also that just under through every character I love on the show is amazing. And they have their own story. And I... Also, I forgot, to mention, I forgot to mention this again, because again, this is the second recording. Um, kudos to them having a character named Joe. Now, of course, uh, it's J-O, not J-O-E, sadly, but it, she's very cool. And I, out of the new cast bunch, because I, I consider everything beyond season eight to be um, new cast stuff, and then season one to eight to be the classics. I think she does def definitely stand up above the breast from the new class, and I think she... I think if, Grey, if Meredith Grey was to ever leave the show... And they were wondering, like, who else could we have to take over the main protagonist role? I would say her. Like, let's just have her just like, I'm going to name myself Joe Gray. And that would be probably the weirdest name combo in the world. And it would be the weirdest way to keep the show going. But it, it, it's a, it's not a bad idea. It really isn't. Um, but for me, again, I would highly recommend Grey's Anatomy. I think you're if you were to binge everything, you are never going to get bored with it. You're always going to be entertained by the story. And realize how much you can connect with these characters on an even deeper level than I was expecting going into it. And you would just be surprised at the consistency that the that the writers and the cast have managed to tell the story now going into its 18th year. And I give them all the respect in the world for doing that. So for me, I will give this my one of my high. I would highly recommend it. You can catch all 17 seasons on Grey's Anatomy on Netflix, ready for your binging habits. And uh, before you ask the question, no, I did not watch the spinoffs. I did not watch Private Practice. I did not watch Station 19 because I ain't that crazy. Maybe someday. Who knows? I never say never to shows anymore. I never do. But right now, there's there's just no current plans for me to do that. But who knows? Maybe someday. 
Um, but let me know in the comments below. What did you think of Grey's Anatomy? Did you watch it? Let me know. Did you love it? Do you hate it? What are your opinions? What are your thoughts? I talked about Grey's Anatomy to death with my friends. I would love to talk about it with some other people. So um, write in the comments if you want to. But I think that's going to do it for me today, everyone. So if you're unaware, this has been a quick impressions from What's in the Two where we were talking about Grey's Anatomy. If you want to know what we're normally doing on What's in the Two besides our quick impressions, uh, we're currently doing Heels episode reviews each and every Tuesday mornings after Brandon Brandon said on Sunday nights on Stars. Um, usually it would be the, the next morning after, but because, um, A, the Emmys are on this Sunday night, and B, I'm already doing something else on Sunday night, sadly, that will prevent me from watching the episode live as normal. Um, we're just going to move it to Tuesdays, as well as the week after that, another show staying over the Monday slot, so that's why. That's your reasoning for why. Uh, we also do DC Stargirl Season 2 episode reviews each and every Wednesday morning after a brand new episode on Tuesday nights on the CW or free the next day on the CW app. And also next week, we're about to start up our Doom Patrol Season 3 episode review um, every Friday mornings after a brand new episode on Thursdays on HBO Max. Um, that's going to be awesome, as well as just another point for clarification. Even though Doom Patrol is going to start up with three episodes, we're still going to give each of those episodes um, their own review. We won't be consisting them down to one big-ass premiere review because that's not fair. Every episode deserves to be analyzed and talked about. So expect a big, a big week for what's on the team next week. Uh, one of the biggest. So uh, a lot of work for me, but I'm going to love it. Uh, but if you only care about Grey's Anatomy, hopefully someday I'll be able to talk about it in full. I would love to do a whole every season review of Grey's Anatomy at some point in the future. But who knows? That's a big it. But if you enjoyed me talking about, you know, um, just TV stuff in general, you just like my voice somehow. Um, you can subscribe to us on youtube.com slash action videos. You can ring that bell for notification when our next review is live, which is normally now every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday mornings. You can also follow us on social media to stay up to date with any sort of updates for the channel, as well as like, favorite, share this review if you want to, because it helps us get it out there to other people who have yet to discover us, helps us beat up that the YouTube algorithm that hates me ever so much, and as well as sharing us for free here on the interwebs. So for all y'all out there, I'll see you all hopefully soon or see you down the road. But until then, stay safe out there, be good to each other, and as always, peace out.